Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to Cody's Lab. So it's been a year now since I started my precious metal refining series, and also it's been a while since I've done the last episode, so I figured I'd uh, start that up again and process these gold teeth. So these are some gold crowns that were taken out of actual people's mouths. As you can see, this uh, crown used to go on top of a molar, and uh, they've been removed, and now they are scrap gold. It should be around 18 carats, and is mixed with various other metals to make it harder and today I'm going to be processing it down and separating those metals so that this is a pure gold bullion. I have everything here that I need to perform the task. Now for the uh, people who are newer to the series I'm going to go through this and explain what each of these are. In order to refine the gold I first must dissolve it. Now gold is very resistant to chemical attack as you might know and so the only thing that can really dissolve it is strong mineral acids. So I have here some muriatic acid and some spirit of nitter, otherwise known as nitric acid. So you see 35% hydrochloric, 75% nitric acid. I'm also going to need various chemicals to selectively bring the metals back into a solid state. Uh, in this case I have oxacilic acid for the gold reduction and uh, dimethylgloxamine for the palladium reduction. But uh, I'll talk more about these later. Uh, for now I've got uh, Two beakers here of the acids measured out. You got 40 milliliters of nitric and 100 milliliters of hydrochloric. That's the approximately amount I'm going to need. I'm going to add the nitric slowly as it is consumed in side reactions. I've also got a large beaker here to perform the reactions in. I also have some gloves and safety goggles, which is a pretty good idea to use, especially if you don't like the idea of getting corrosive chemicals on your skin. Me personally, I don't mind it so much, but. Uh, Yes. So now over here I have a scale. That is of course to weigh the materials, to see what we have to begin with, and what we have after. That way we can determine, you know, if we lost something along the way. So measuring out those teeth, looks like uh, just under 25 grams total here. Now considering that's 18 carats, that means I've probably got, uh, well, about 18 grams of gold. So that should be about what I'm expecting, which is quite a significant amount. I think it's actually more than I've ever done at once at any one time. I have a hot plate here. Now this is to warm the reactions and speed it up. Not strictly necessary, but it will save literally days. I've got a pan here with some gravel. This is to dissipate the heat so I don't break my glass. Uh, bonus points if you know where this gravel came from. And of course, I'm going to need a way to melt the metals. So I got a little furnace here that can get up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, a little melting dish to melt the stuff in, and of course, tongs to get it in and out of the furnace. So I think that should be just about everything. Uh, let's get started. Uh, first of all, I took a small piece of the gold and I put it inside of this uh, flask here with some aquariga mixed up. Aquariga, of course, is the mixture of these two acids. Now the idea here is to see if incortation is necessary. Uh, you see if there was too much silver here, the aquariga would not dissolve it, which would be a problem. And it looks to me like it dissolved it without trouble, so we're going to go ahead and just put the things in without the incortation process. If the silver concentration is too high, it'll form a protective layer that'll keep the metals from dissolving. But if the silver is low enough, then it'll just kind of flake off as silver chloride and the metals will completely dissolve. Of course, I only tested one of the teeth, so it may be possible that a few of them have too much silver, in which case I will need to melt them down with another base metal such as copper. So let's uh, add my hydrochloric acid, just like this. That cleaned them up nice. Yes. And I'm going to add half of my nitric. Or about that. I'll add half later. But uh, right now, let's get that on the burner. Let's warm it up to increase the speed of the reaction. And of course I forgot to put my gloves and safety glasses on. I'm going to do that now. I mean, the real danger is going to be when it starts uh, boiling and popping, so I guess it's not too bad. Alright, so I'll set up the time-lapse camera so you guys can watch that dissolve. I'll kind of hang around uh, watching it, but not too close because this does produce toxic fumes. You also notice I'm outside here, so the wind can blow everything away. And uh, yeah, come back in a few hours and see if that's actually dissolved. In this gold dissolving process, the nitric acid oxidizes a thin layer of gold. 
the hydrochloric acid is then able to react with that oxidized layer forming arum chloric acid, which is water soluble. Once the hydrochloric acid is stripped off the oxide layer, the nitric acid is free to oxidize the gold once again, and the process continues until the pieces are completely dissolved. So after dissolving all night long, I'm left with some teeth still. I thought this might happen. This kind of means that they weren't as high of carrot as uh, I was told they were. But uh, let's see how much is left. I think a couple of them did actually dissolve. Yeah, I'm left with 18 grams. That means five, seven grams of gold was actually dissolved, which I have over in that little beaker right now. Which means I am gonna have to encort this to get it to finish dissolving. And for that, I've got some uh, silver powder here. Uh, just some stuff that I had on hand. I'm gonna put these teeth inside of a crucible. I'm gonna add roughly an ounce or two of silver and put them in the furnace and meld it down, making an alloy of the silver and gold that is mostly silver. Okay, there we are. I'm just gonna take this and pour it into some water so it breaks up the metal into little beads. Nice little round discs, which is perfect, because that'll dissolve in the acid quickly. Hopefully this is less than 20% gold by weight, so that it will dissolve in the acid. So I'm gonna add a bunch of distilled water. This is so that we can keep the silver nitrate soluble. I'm gonna add a little bit of nitric acid. Now the nitric acid will dissolve the silver again, but it won't dissolve the gold. The gold will be left behind as a fine brown or black powder, which should be nearly pure, and I can take that and dissolve it in aqua riga. Hopefully the nitric acid has digested the silver out. Let's pour off the solution. Look at the color of that. Yeah, that's definitely got some palladium in there. So I'll definitely keep this solution. I mean, it was anyway, because it's got mostly silver nitrate. Let's pour most of that off. And there is our material, which should be mostly gold and anything else that didn't dissolve in the nitric acid, such as platinum. Let's uh, take a look at this. Yeah, see, it's very crumbly. All the silver's been dissolved out of it, so now you've left with basically a sponge-like material. Now I'm gonna add in just a little bit more nitric acid and see if I get any reaction. It's looking like I'm not getting a reaction, so that means I got all the silver out. Excellent. Let's pour the rest of this 20 milliliters in there. Let me go find the hydrochloric acid. Let's make aquariga again, dissolve that gold. So I just added the hydrochloric acid. As you can see, it uh, kind of clouded up in there because I didn't get all the silver nitrate out, but that's all right. It's not very much silver in there and it's certainly not stopping it from reacting with the gold. As you can see, it's beginning the reaction already. Well, let's uh, leave this on the hot plate put on my watch glass there on a fan and I'll come back in a little while and that's all dissolved. So the reaction is stopped and I'm left with gold dissolved in the solution and a little bit of a silver chloride that has managed to get in there as contamination. But uh, that'll be easy to separate out. I'm just gonna pour this into another glass dish and it still doesn't matter if I get a little silver in there. This is just uh, to get rid of the leftover nitric acid. So there's that one. And uh, here's the gold that was dissolved earlier. This is probably green due to some copper. But again, I will be getting rid of those contaminants in a little while. Well, this continues to evaporate down. Let's uh, go deal with this and see if we can separate the palladium from the silver. First of all, let's get it out of the jam jar so that we can work with it a little bit better. So I'm gonna pour it off into this beaker, making sure not to pour off anything that is held to the bottom. Yeah, a little bit of silver in there. Okay, I'm gonna take this and go warm it up. In addition to this beaker, I also warmed up some distilled water 
which I will be dissolving some dimethylgloxamine into. As you can see here, this stuff is not particularly soluble, but it will dissolve in warm water. I just stir this in and get as much of it to dissolve as I can. Now I will pour this into the silver and palladium solution. Now the palladium should form a nice yellow precipitate, which you can already see forming. Excellent. Give that a stir. So there is a lot of palladium here, so much that I'm having to resort to filtration to get it all out of the solution. Maybe a little bit settled to the bottom there. But you can see that the solution that is coming out of the filter, the filtrate, is a light bluish green color, which means I've got all the palladium out of it, and what I'm left with is some silver nitrate and a little bit of copper. I can just uh, easily extract the silver by adding some chloride of some sort, dropping the silver out of silver chloride, which I'll recycle into using as more incortation material. I'm going to rinse this with the distilled water a few times to get out all the silver. Let's open this filter paper up and see what I've got. Look at that. And I've got more left in the gold solution. Excellent. So here is our gold solution. Over the last uh, two days, I've let this evaporate down slowly. I've added more hydrochloric acid and evaporated it down again, all in an effort to get rid of all nitric acid that may be present. And now I'm going to put it over in this taller beaker, just like this. Now that the silver's had a chance to settle down, let's put it back over into this large dish. There's the silver. I'm going to rinse this with a little bit more water. Now that I have this solution warmed up again, I'm going to add 20 grams of oxalic acid, which I just mixed up with some water, and this should reduce the gold. Yes, I can already begin seeing the reaction. Excellent. You see how it's getting all cloudy? Okay, now that that's in. Gonna give it a bit of a stir. And I'm gonna slowly add sodium hydroxide to lower the pH and more effectively reduce the gold. Oh yeah. Oh man, look how shiny and I hope you, I hope you can see it on the camera. It looks like it's got glitter. Well, it doesn't look like I really need the sodium hydroxide. I'll just let this continue, then we should have some gold. Seems like the reaction is stopped, so now I'm going to pour off the liquid into this other taller glass so I can let it finish settling. And yes, I do believe this is the first time I've used a funnel, at least in quite a while. Pour this out. There's my gold sponge. So here's the gold, and here's the leftover solution, which could contain platinum and palladium. To check for platinum, I'm going to put in a pinch of ammonium chloride. And if platinum's there, I should get a yellow-orange precipitant. Judging by that reaction, I'd say there's either not platinum or very little. So let's skip the platinum and go straight to extracting the palladium. Putting in a little bit of dimethylgloxamine. That gets a result. Definitely has palladium. There's my palladium and there's my gold. I'm going to put the gold over here in this melting dish. So we can put it in the furnace, which I will do right now. There it is. That cool off, and I'm going to weigh it. Let's put this gold on the scale and see just how much we've got. Looks like just under 15 grams. That's not a bad recovery. I mean, I was expecting 18 grams, but I think that was because 
the gold that I had was not the 18 carats that I was told it was. It was probably closer to 14 carats for the stuff that didn't dissolve in the acid. Let's go work on the palladium. So I now have my palladium dissolved into lead and now I'm going to put it back in the furnace and uh, smelt the lead away until I'm left with just the palladium. It's still going to be impure, still going to have quite a bit of lead in it, but I have a way I can get rid of that. See the problem is, is I'm not getting it hot enough with this furnace because palladium melts at well, 3000 Fahrenheit and this is getting at 2000. So let's uh, try this other torch here. So I'm going to hit this bead with my Hoxie map gas torch and hopefully this will get hot enough to actually melt the palladium. Come on. Oh, no problem there. Oxidizing flame to burn out the rest of the lead. And I got a nice looking bead. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the oxygen. And just before it completely cools, I'm gonna blast it with a little bit of gas. Just to keep the bead looking nice. Let's put this little bead of palladium on the scale and see what we got. <laughs> just over half a gram. Yeah, it's rather pitiful, but there it is. Managed to recover the palladium out of those teeth. So out of 25 grams of teeth, we got 15 and a half grams worth of precious metals. That's not including the silver. Uh, imagine the silver was the bulk of the rest of it. So yeah, kind of gives you an idea of how much is actually in them. There's the pieces in a little bit better lighting. You can see the gold there and the palladium. Yeah, it's rather pretty, made from teeth. So I guess the question on everybody's mind right now is what happened with the light? <laughs> So I guess the question on everybody's mind right now is, could I actually make money doing this? And well, let's go over that. I bought most of the teeth off of eBay and I averaged about $22 per gram of the auctions that I won. However, a lot of the teeth that I got were from fans donating them, so I didn't pay anything for them really. Uh, but assuming that I did have to buy them for the average $22 per gram, that means that for the 25 grams of teeth, I paid right around $550 for them all. Now this is 15 grams of gold, uh, about half a gram of palladium. That works out to maybe $610. So there is a small profit margin that is possible, but with all the chemicals and stuff, and certainly my time, you might be able to do it if you could buy pounds of teeth and you know scale up your production process. But other than that, you're not gonna make money off of these. So hope you all enjoyed, I'll see you next time.